So in this um, first question of this um, of this atoms, molecules, and stoichiometry topic, so these numbers here are just for my um, for my classification, really. So that it's easy for me to keep track of what I've done and what I haven't done. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, the question itself is more important. So it's saying that uh, the empirical formula of carbohydrate is CH two O, and it's obviously carbohydrate is a um, polysaccharide so it's a it's a macromolecules a big molecule okay with much much heavier molecular weight than just ch2o but the empirical formula is ch2o and that's what we are going to use in our combustion analysis okay to digest and oxidize so that is the combustion well we are essentially combusting the carbohydrate that we ingest and that's how we break it down into simple sugars and um and in the body as we respire we will release co2 and h2o and also the reaction is exothermic and that's how it keeps you going yeah okay so ch2o plus o2 giving you co2 and h2o the first thing you got to do is balancing the equation the carbon there's one there's one carbon there there's two hydrogen there's two hydrogen there there's one oxygen there's two oxygen plus one oxygen there's three oxygen minus one oxygen therefore you're left with two oxygen since this is diatomic you just need one of it okay um now they want the mass of the carbon dioxide so this is what you want and this is what you have they give you 1.80 kilogram so we're going to work in kilogram so by doing mole ratio so the mole of co2 over the mole of ch2o so these are mole calculations questions you can uh, potentially check out my other playlist uh, under Molecule um, moles and stoichiometry concept, where I do a couple of work examples and I outline this um, strategy where I use fractions, which you will see me doing, um, using and utilizing it throughout these uh, topical questions on uh, moles and stoichiometry. Okay, because uh, I find it it's really clear cut, in the sense that from the balance equation you get one is to one. Okay, and on the right side. I'll put in what actually happens, okay? So I want the mass of CO2. The mass of CO2 is in kilogram. The MR of CO2 is 44. Typically, we have to convert it to gram. But because I also am given the mass of carbohydrate in kilogram, so the, the conversion unit will actually cancel out, okay? So the MR of the CH2O, which I use in the empirical formula, is 12.0 plus 1.0 times 2. 16 that's 30 okay so what i'm saying is because um because i want the mass of co2 in kilogram this one has to be in kilogram as well so that the kilogram um conversion factor to gram will cancel out because when you do mass over mr the molecular mass is the mass in gram per mole of the substance okay so that's why we usually have to convert to uh, gram but not in this case because because the conversion factor get cancelled out so that gave me 2.64 kilogram so there's 2.64 kilogram there okay so moving on to the second question now so this is actually a combustion analysis question and uh, I cover a few more work examples specifically on combustion analysis uh, in a, in a two-part video series, I think. Uh, you can check it out under the playlist of um, A-level concept, um, combustion analysis. Yeah, there's, I think there's other moles and stoichiometry section as well, if I'm not mistaken. Here you have methane and ethane. You combust no excess of oxygen. Uh, the thing is because you have both methane and ethane and then you pass the gas through aqueous potassium hydroxide so that is a base that will react well it will absorb the co2 which is acidic and it will react with the acidic gas obviously yeah so we are looking for total volume of co2 okay individually if you balance the equation ch2 plus o2 give you co2 plus h2o the carbon balance out the hydrogen you will need four so you need two in front of it the oxygen now you need two plus two which is four so you actually need two of that okay 
when you have C2H6, which is ethane, you will need CO2H2O, sorry, it's not 2H2O. You will need two CO2 because you got two carbon. You got six hydrogen, so you need three H2O. So three times two give you six hydrogen. Two times two give you four oxygen. Four plus three oxygen give you seven oxygen. So you need seven oxygen. We use fractions. Well, I use fractions because seven over two times two equal to seven. I'm not sure how you've been taught in school, but fractions are totally fine in balancing equation, provided that you're not changing the identity of the molecular <laughs> oxygen and the total number of oxygen atoms equals seven. It balances out the total number of oxygen atoms on the right side. Yeah? The thing is, individually, if you had to work out from burning 10 cn cube of this, you can get how, how much CO2, you can do that. Same for that and for that, okay? So I guess, I'll show you the individual uh, method because that one is nice and easy. So we know that these are gases, all right? Methane and ethane are gases. So we're talking about volume ratio, okay? So we have the mole ratio where one mole of CH4 will give you one mole of CO2. If you have 10 cmq of CH4, you will get 10 cmq of CO2. And why is that? Simply because Vol molar volume of gas is equal to 24 dm cube per mole. That is also equal to 24,000 cm cube per mole. And when we are dealing with mole of gas, we are talking about the volume of the gas over the molar volume of the gas. So since all gases have the same molar volume, because any one mole of a gas will contain 24 dm cube or 24,000 cm cube per mole of it, Therefore, this bottom bit is a constant. So when we talk about mole ratio of gas and gas, one is to one, is equal to the volume ratio of gas. So if you have 10 cmq or CH4 that burns completely, complete combustion, right? So therefore you will get 10 cmq because of the one is to one. If you, however, have 20 or no, 10 cmq also of the ethane, but because the balance equation show one mole of this give you two mole of that. So therefore, you will get two times the volume, which will give you 20 cm cube of CO2. So the first equation give you 10 cm cube of CO2. The second equation give you 20 cm cube. That is from burning 10 cm cube of each of methane and ethane. So total, so total volume of CO2 is equal to 10 plus 20 which is 30 cm cube, and the CO2 is completely absorbed by the base, which is aqueous potassium hydroxide. So altogether, it's just 30 cm cube. Okay, so I go back. I go back to what I said earlier about there's another method, is that you can combine the two equations together. But I suppose if you already balance this, if you already balance that, you combine them together. All you're gonna do is you get CH4 plus C2H6 plus I don't know two plus seven over two or two. I'm not interested in the oxygen actually. 3CO2 plus 5H2O because you're burning a mixture of it. So 20 cm cube of gas total. Okay. Therefore, you get 30 cm cube. Mm. Okay, this is, this is a bit hard, but you can see why you get 30 because if the mole of CH4 is to the mole of CO2 is 1 is to 3. If you burn 10 cm cube, therefore you get 30 cm cube. Okay, you get 30 because you sum up, sum them up. Okay, I think this method is not very clear. <laughs> it's almost one step further than this. After balancing it, you also need to add this again, which takes time. I might as well just um, work it out from, um, from previously, you know, where I just work it out individually. Give me it. It's much more direct and obvious. You can just sum them up, all right? So the answer there is 30 cmq because all 30 cmq of the carbon dioxide produced from each of them, okay, they will, they will be absorbed by the potassium hydroxide, okay? So that's the end of this uh, second question. We'll now move on to the third question. So in this third question, they are asking you the number of molecules. Be careful, yeah, molecules 
in 500 cm cube of oxygen. So oxygen exists as O2 at room temperature and pressure. We're talking about gas here. So you need the molar volume of gas, which is 24,000 cm cube per mole. True for any gas at room temperature and pressure. Okay, so the mole of oxygen is equal to 500 cm cube over 24,000. So you have cm cube and you have cm cube per mole. So altogether, you're going to end up with. Uh, that's not very good. Let me just leave the answer as exact as fraction. So that's 1 over 48 mole. Therefore, the number of O2 molecules. These are related to Avogadro constants times the mole of oxygen. So 1 over 48 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And I got 1.254 times 10 to the 22. If this is a theory paper, I always show before I run up. But since this is a multiple choice paper, it really does not matter. Okay, so 1.25 times 10 to the 22. So moving on to question four, this is about the preparation of soft margarine. So you learn about margarine production actually in GCSE or, or, or all level actually. Okay, so um, it's not a very healthy um, substitute for butter because it's industrially produced. It's a result of hydrogenating. That means you add hydrogen across the double bond there because you can do something what we call reduction of alkene and this is also in GCSE or your all level chemistry towards the end of the organic chemistry section yeah on average one of its side chain is converted into mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the two side chain are converted into that so in the preparation of soft margarine um okay let's think about this ch3 ch24 mm -hmm. so the trick really is to count the double bond before and after the reaction so if you label this as your first product x if you label this as your second product y so y would still have um, when you hydrogenate that you will have x and you will have y okay two of the side chain get converted into y residue so y still has one time c double bond and x has two times c double bond you see that there's one there's two for x whereas there's only one for y okay so altogether how many double bond do you have at start at start you have one two three four five six seven eight nine so you have nine so you go from nine time carbon carbon double bond and now you have one of x because only one residue goes to x and then you have 2 times carbon carbon double bond, which is x, plus 2y. Each is 1 times carbon carbon double bond. Total, you have 2 times carbon carbon double bond, okay? Because you produce 2 of the y, whereas you only produce 1 of the x, okay? 1 of the x and 2 of the y. So altogether, 4 times carbon carbon. So you go from here to here you lose five time carbon carbon okay if you lose five time carbon carbon therefore you need five times h h okay that means h2 molecule so therefore you need five mole of hydrogen in order to convert one mole of that um, this thing into whatever that's required just by reading through what is happening okay So moving on to the next question. So this is a question on amino acids. Do I need to know what amino acid is? Well, you probably should, okay? Uh, given that you already done um, uh, all-level biology before, 
Okay, so they say that how many molecules of an amino acid of that molecular mass would this be? They give you the mole, they give you the molecular mass, they want the number of molecules, okay? They want the number of molecules. So the number of molecules are related to number of moles. It's to do with number of mole, okay? Not molecule, mole, multiplied by Avogadro constant. If you know the number of mole is 3 times 10 to the minus 21 mole, you multiply by Avogadro constant, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules minus 1. Wait, hang on. No. There's just number of molecules per mole, the number of molecules in one mole. Okay, so that makes sense. The number of molecules in one mole. So per mole and the mole will cancel out. And I got 1806. So realistically speaking, this is the closest value to it. I think they must have used uh, 6 times 10 to the 23 without the 0 0.02, then they will have gotten 1800 exactly. Okay, so this thing in there to confuse you, there's no use for it at all. If you know this relationship, when you first started learning more and you relate it to the number of particles, that's what it's all about. So this is the end of this uh, short tutorial video. If you uh, like these um, MCQ tutorial videos, uh, leave a like, subscribe to the channel and share with your uh, friends and your colleagues. Uh, remember, these are also useful to uh, any students sitting for A-level chemistry because MCQ, as I mentioned, are useful revision for, for your um, concepts as well. Yeah, I'll see you in the next video.